what really, um, you know, the, the, the one thing that really interests me is how are they going to alleviate that Faramis problem that they have? Because in game number one, we saw how important the Balmond was. It was a piece of their composition, of their pocket strategy against Blackness International. They still have Lecho the Lilia, uh, sorry, the Claude the Lilia, as well as the Lolita, but they don't have that finisher because you saw that, right? It was so crucial. The lethal counters were so important in game number one, yep. and the lack thereof of game number three kind of boggles me. Will Ryzen still be able to have as much impact as he did in yeah. games one and two as in game number three? Not only that, but I mean, I gotta say, I am, I am, I love to see Haji on the Cho. This is going back even from season eight, right? Like hit him playing this, them doing the switcheroo. It, it's gonna be a sight to see. Also, Faramis, I like that he's running with the magic warship, right? Because that poke potential alone will work really well yeah. with this lineup that they have here. And to, again, they are gonna be going against the poke from Ed 2 Max as well, right? Yep. They want to force those early black shoes if they can, anything else. So it does yep. go back to your point. Wolf, oh. can they do the same thing with Ryzen? But now in the middle lane, Haji going to be taking quite a bit of damage. The knockup is there. Can't get the kill here. Yes, he does. Ed 2 Max grabbing the first blood. Now the queen going to be the focus, getting knocked up with the chains. It's two kills in the hands of Smart Omega. How weird decision coming out from Blast International, obliging to the fight, knowing that Omega still has got full. Gloom stacks onto Etomax. And then you also have Ryzen who just freshly got level 4. Although they do have the lethal counter, they don't have a shred. Yeah. This Oh My Venus Faramis is item dependent. It is a position for a mid lane yes. um, Faramis. So compared to game number one, this will have more shields given because more attack power, but even stronger wave clear if it comes to that. But early on, you can see Omega oh. does have the advantage. Oh, Haji can't even get that level 4. He did by the time he died, but now the turtle going to be worked on. Lethal counter comes out. It is going to be secured at 2 max with the reset with the Black Shoes. Wise has to get out of dodge here. Edward, oh. look at the bomb, the move, the groove. Quite low. Chaknu's still alive, but Edward grabbing a kill now. They're turning it around the best they can. They also secured the turtle. But still, Smart Omega in good position here, especially at 2 max. Yeah. Ryzen dying in there is uh, not the best for Omega, especially after losing the turtle. But they do give so much gold to Eto Max as well as Renzio. I wonder how they feel about that. Look at Ryzen already. Four out of four killed the participation. Dying once. Dying once. So also 100% killed the yes. participation for Blacklist. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> Which is great. Again, it's what you do when you're uh, when you're a jungle Julian. You have to be in the thick of things, yeah. yes. and you have to have a really uh, tough constitution, for the lack of a better term, because you have to always be on. There are junglers where, when your ult is down, you know you can't pick fights. Yep. But if you're a Julian, you have no ult. Yeah. Yeah. You're always juggling. You're always thinking, like, what can I do? What else can I do? And to do that for about 15, 20 minutes, it's easier said than done. Especially in a game three of this caliber. Back-to-back you know? -back games, in <laughs> fact. Yeah. It's the second game. We saw that game number one has able to have impact on almost all parts of the game, particularly in the latter portions where his uptime, courtesy of all the cooldown reductions, as well as the, the fact that his uh, skills are all spammable. You saw how well he played in the previous game. And I'm excited to see more because this time, it seems like Omega are going to be up and up the tempo. They play Lilia and Lolita once again with the, with the Julian. There's so much fighting potential for Omega. And they have to because again, at some point, Omega is going to expire. Blacklist is going to hit their power spike and the Queen is going to start hurting again. Omega knows how much it stings to get a Ghostbusters in the face. Yeah. Oh, Owen is actually leading by a lot. Yeah, he's full level, level ahead of Kara. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say that that's very apparent here. Uh, there was a lot of focus. Haji sitting in the bottom side, too. So now the turtle going to be juggled around by both teams. Wise prepping that lethal counter combination. Etu Max awaiting the pop the black Whoa. juice as he does. Now they force him off the turtle. Haji can't find the connection he's looking for just yet. So turtle still juggled around. Kelra trying to get back in here. Everyone's just going to be going back and forth for now. Edward even getting the call to come join the fight. 
as we see Renzio follow up too. They might look for a crash down here. They get the knock up. Colt Alter comes down. Haji with the way of the dragon. They're going to follow up on this one. Turtle still oh. jumping around. Nice stun there. Now Haji going to be the focus. Turtle secured though by Oheb. They could just give a call to retreat for now. And that's what they do as Black International happy with the turtle. The well, resilience, man. That's an early Ube call. It's exactly. Five, it's five minutes in. And you see how Omega wanted to counter it. They poked um, Oma Evita so much. Even Etomax committing all of his stacks and then popping the black shoes. All of his charges, I mean, of the of the glooms. Yep. They have kill intent. They want to Oma Evita still prematurely use the cult altar. But the resilience from Oma Evita was there. He managed it and waited for the right moment. And then they punished Ryzen afterwards. They didn't budge. They didn't budge. And Blacklist International will have so much of a tempo shift now that they have already taken back this game on their hands. This is looking good. Uh, oh my Venus Faramis already has uh, the uh, enchanted talisman. Mm -hmm. So you can expect more soul stampedes, more That's Ghostbusters. Right. Uh, but let's look at the gold lane matchup because it's very rare that we get to check in on them. Again, not much action from Kelra and Ohem yet in this game. Uh, there's already a Blade of Despair on uh, Ohem's Beatrix. Mm -hmm. Kelra, what's he looking to build here? Yeah, golden staff, I would say. Ooh. Okay, able to dodge that bad situation Ooh. here. They're gonna find the knockup. Haji, Colt Alter comes down, trying to force them back here. But on the back side, that's gonna be the lethal counter, finding Ryzen. Now Haji still sitting in the jungle. They get pulled here. The rest of the Blacklist International there to back them up. Haji gonna be completely fine. That's the Ube, the teamwork that we are known. That Blacklist International is known for playing. Yeah. Early Ube. Yeah, early Ube with additional maybe cheese in there. Yeah. As they have the the Framis. This wasn't available when they had the, the Ube strategy. But now Framis with the Cult Altar just even, you know, adds another layer to that Ube strategy that we know. And they held on so much. They forced Ryzen to utilize the chains, I'm oh, sorry, the, the sword. So he had no escape. Well, they're still going to force this one. Haji going to get knocked up, dodging everything that he can here. Bobbin and Weaving can't dodge everything, though. Now Ryzen going to punish him. Turtle going to be worked on. Blazing Duet comes oh. out. Oh, head falls here. Turtle secured once again by Wise. Going to grab that one. They're going to be on the retreat. But Smart Omega not going to let it happen this time as three fall for Blacklist International. Could be four as he's going to get locked down here. Wise going to get focused. Three members can't get away. Oh. Kill spree for Ryzen. He's had enough of this frustration and now he grabs himself some kills. <laughs> oh my Venus. <laughs> oh no. The queen oh. falls here. Nice kick into the turret but the black shoes able to keep Etu Max alive. Whoa, Omega just burst it down. Oh my Venus. Oh my Venus was planning to utilize his ultimate, but, but there was a fraction of a second of animation with the cut altar. It yes. was enough for Omega yeah. to pin him down. And then Haji kicking Etomax, but Etomax had black shoes and purify as well. Omega just turned things around. Imagine this. Ryzen was 1, 3, and 3 before that fight yeah. happened, and now he has a killing spree. Four, three, and five. He's built up. He's built up. He's built up. So again, there's a rubber banding in smaller scale for Omega. Again, it, this is the result of their man fighting uh, strategy that they found the groove to in game two. And now they're pushing the pedal to the metal against Blacklist. At what point can Blacklist fight back? What are we looking for? What are we looking at if, if we're looking at a power spike for them? I think you wait for the second, uh, the wind of nature. That's yeah. for one. Mm -hmm. Maybe the second item on only Venus, to, so that they will have more shields. Oh, they're gonna focus on Edward here. Flickers out with the one-two jab. Can't escape that one as Edward falls on the top side. Meanwhile, in the beta blade, way of the dragon to come out. Oh. Cross map play and trade here. Looking for another setup. Kelra doesn't commit just yet. Gonna back off. The good thing they pulled that because now a lord is up. They got to be careful how they approach this yeah. one. But Cult Arthur's um, cooldown is quite fast compared to a Nominum Blast. Yep. So, but that is a way for them to kind of uh, alleviate the pressure once again, because we are going to be uh, reset. Because what Blacklist and Omega needs to do is to clear out the waves once again. So there will be a little bit of 15 second breathing time. But Omega wants to dance once again. 
Okay, the way the dragon does come oh, out on Renzio, back. that's huge there. Now the numbers advantage. Cactu oh, goes in, no! finds the perfect Numenon Blast! And a Kelra there to follow up with the Blazing Duet. Wise quite low. Kelra on the chase here. Does he get the kill? And he does! Three fall for Blacklist International. Lord still gonna be worked on, but this is gonna go in the hands of Smart Omega. Edward trying to buy something here. Black Shoes committed, and that is huge for Smart Omega. There's gotta be an instant replay for Dude. that Newman on Blast. That probably is one of the best ones that we've seen. It's not a, like a five-man Newman on Blast, but it, all the heroes that mattered in a team fight was taken out single-handedly by Chaknu and the Chak Mamba surprise. Oh my Venus and Ohem were so crucial in team fights, particularly because of the cult all right? And not only that, what's wonderful about what Chaknu did was he flickered before the Numen Blast hit. Yeah. So there's a little bit of feeling with the slow as we saw from Chaknu. That's why they could not have even thought of flickering away or walking away. Exactly. Yeah. It's at the point where, yeah, we just have to deal with this. It's right here. Maybe we can survive, maybe we won't. And Omega just converted through the roof. 5k gold lead, Lord marching up top. What Something's a... gonna give maybe a turret or two. Yeah, this is... Top Mamba. <laughs> they should be able to do something here <clears throat> on the defense. Blacklist National, again, they gotta be careful how they still approach things because uh, again, you're, I mean, Haji right there with the flicker was looking for a moment, but oh, not gonna happen. Another Chak Mamba Blast. Haji gonna be fine though. So oh for now, they defend. Lord is taken care of, but it's gonna be another turret here in the mid lane. And oh my Venus again did not pop the cult altar. He's not gonna be baited by Omega so many times. The only time that they, lo the only times where they lost the fight was when oh my Venus was bursted down. Okay, they're gonna make a play oh, here God on the bottom Eisen. side. Haji trying to force something. Here comes Kaura with the blazing duet. They get the, the cult altar out. That is gonna be a big pickup, but still, what can they press here if you're smart Omega? What they can press so far is the fact that the ball is in their court. It's Omega's choice when fights happen, how they happen, because as you saw earlier, Renzi got hit by the way of the dragon, and he's the one who still became the aggressor seconds later. God. And that's just the first Lord push, which we know is not game ending. It's the juggler for sure. And what I really like about this is that even when Omega has a mass 7k gold lead, you can still feel that Blacklist International still has a lot of win conditions. Legit threat. Yeah. Legit threat. Ohem can still pack up a punch. When we see the winds of nature play out, it's going to be also very crucial. And we have to talk about Haji. So far, only one good way of the dragon. What we saw, the previous ones weren't that good because he landed onto Etomax. Still has to play out. I mean, there's so many good players in this game. Even Renzo is playing so well. All of them. All of them. This is this could could this possibly be uh, a, a preface, a teaser for what we might see in the playoffs? I mean, you can I say that about this. a couple of teams, honestly. Yeah, I wouldn't be sad. Yeah. Why do we only have a double round robin? Why can't we have like <laughs> four round robins, right? Ooh, we mentioned, I mentioned earlier, I don't mind casting this forever. Oh. Okay, Haji, half health here. You saw the damage already coming out from Kalra. They got to respect that too. Oheb also pumping the damage, but he's got to get in position here. That's going to be the hard part for him. Look at the backside though. Kalra looking for an angle, forcing the conceal play already from Blackness International. Look at that Lord, less than oh, half health! Haji's gonna get focused, the Flicker comes out, they get another crucial resource here, oh, and that's gonna be another Lord going in the favor of Smart Omega. Here's where you're starting to feel the 8k gold lead. Yeah. The fact that just by standing yes. around and not even finding weird angles, yeah. Blacklist respects Omega's threat, and that's why it was a clear Lord take. That I agree with. Because if you're looking at Omega, there's so many sources of damage. Blacklist International, it's only just Oheb at this point. Eventually, Oh My Venus will pop up, will pack up a punch. Weiss's role in this game is just to use the lethal counter. You see, Edward, if they, if the, if the economy was yeah. different, if Edward had the gold advantage, he would have gone for the kill for oh. sure. Edward getting chunked pretty low though. 
So they lose the mid turret in the base. It's going to be taken care of here. But Smart Omega, look at the grab. All turrets as they grab the top one. Now going to be focusing on the bottom. Can they force something here? Renzio just zoning everybody out the best he can. They hold on to that bottom turret for now. And even... <laughs> You feel that Blacklist International might even be stronger with just one base building to protect. Ghost Bursters in a mid lane. Um, mid lane for Amis is gonna hurt, so you have to be careful if you're Omega. Yep, with all the units crashing in, in close proximity. Oh, oh, oh Chak New comes in with a new room blast. The pull, the cold altar is popped. Calro not gonna commit just yet, waiting for the right moment. Is he gonna go in? Goes in now with the blazing duet, trying to turn the favor here. Haji has fallen. Chak New is down too. It's only a one for one trade, and Smart Omega backs off for now. In all <laughs> consideration, that was a great defense by Blacklist. Yeah, that I was agree. a trade that they could have taken all day. I skills agree. thrown out in the right order, and they're still in it. Exactly. They waited for the right moments as well. They punished, and they also made it difficult for Keller to jump in. You see that there's a threat of the knockout strike, which is a knockup, and then the stomp from the Jeet Kundo, which is also a knockup. At the last moment when Kara went in with the Blazing Duet, he was immediately cancelled, almost immediately cancelled yeah, with a Jeet Kune Do, which already cancels out one ultimate from Omega. So now you taste, you can see the taste of what the team fights are going to happen, which skills are important to take note of. At this point, the Numenon Blast, if it's just used for peeling, it's not as impactful as you would thought it would be. But that's also true with the Cult Altar. If it's forced out way too early, it, it is just another speed up spell for Blacklist International. So, not only are the usages of the skills important, the timing on where and who they land to is equally important. This feels like an uncanny valley because very rarely do we see teams lean into a cult altar, yeah. much like these two teams have tonight. Exactly. Man, the patience too from Kelra in the previous fight. Just trying to wait for that angle, that moment for him to go in. And unfortunately, like you said, you know, for him, it was the micro decisions from Black International to stop the damage. But now Kelra goes in once again with the Blazing Duet, forcing the Cult Altar. They're in trouble here. The Queen has fallen and Oheb. Now it's Haji going to be the focus. Another member is going to go down here. He's buying time the best he can. But Edward going to be the focus oh. now. Oh the Queen back. back up, but not for long. As that two Max able to grab the kill. Oh. Edward falls. It's only Haji. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it. Smart Omega, the Barungai, gets revenge. And they celebrate as they take the series. The way that Omega executed in their second Lord push and eventual Lord Dance and eventual Game Ender. It was a combination of what they learned in game number one and game number two. You saw their discipline when they saw Oh My Venus. They didn't oblige to the fight when Oh My Venus respawned. They respected the early respawn from the passive of the Faramis.